Uh, so hello everyone, thanks for coming to our talk. Uh, we're here at EMF, like all of you probably are, for the fashion, right? <laughs> but seriously, fashion is an, uh, the first story that you tell when you enter a room. So who here bought an EMF t-shirt or has one from a previous year or wants to get one? Awesome. So by wearing that shirt, you're telling others that you're a part of the EMF community, um, that you're interested in making or probably are a maker, uh, and that you support a place for yourself and others to show off all your cool shit, right? So uh, Shannon and I are actually involved with, why is this not clicking? <laughs> you don't have to. You're supposed to be able to just hit enter. Okay. Uh, so Shannon and I are both a part of Make Fashion. Uh, Shannon is the co-founder of Make Fashion, or co-founded it about 10 years ago. I came in about six years ago as a designer and haven't left since. Uh, Make Fashion is a Canada-based not-for-profit collective that brings together designers, engineers, and makers to create fashion technology garments for the runway. Uh, Make Fashion has produced over 80 shows around the world, including North America, Asia, and Europe and has produced over 300 unique fashion tech designs. Uh, and now I'm gonna let Shannon talk through a few examples of different pieces. Um, so uh, just to catch up on Make Fashion again, this is one of our runway shows that we had in Calgary. Uh, this was a team from uh, Ontario that made this piece. The idea behind it was to create, you know, to kind of combine technology and magic. They're trying to create a piece that kind of evokes a witch's familiar. So the neat thing about this is the drone would lift up the train of the, uh, of the dress, follow her down the runway, and then land on the, you can see there's a glyph that she's just about standing on there. It had a camera that would track her and then land on the glyph when it was finished. So it was a really cool piece, um, but all about kind of this, this idea of storytelling. Um, this piece was, uh, or these pieces I guess, uh, we did a, a runway show in Chengdu, China, and uh, some of the students from the show there, they, they actually introduced us to the idea of, um, of uh, edge glow fiber optics. Now, how many people have used EL wire or, yeah, I hate EL wire. <laughs> I feel like if you've used it, you probably do a little bit too. So we've kind of switched over after this show in China, we've kind of switched over to using this edge glow fiber optics and you can put a laser or an LED on the end of it and cause it to glow. Which what, what was neat about that is we then brought them and this, this piece to our runway show in Calgary where they were able to interact and learn from and share their knowledge with designers in, in Calgary. So it's been a really awesome opportunity to pass these ideas around and share them. And it's a beautiful piece. Um, this, uh, this was made by Angel and Alex. They're two of our um, indigenous um, designers. Um, this piece was for, to recognize miss, missing and murdered women and our indigenous women, which has been like a, a, a problem over the past, I don't know, 50 years or something. There's been an inordinate amount of, of like uh, indigenous women killed if you look at the uh, statistics. And, um, and they're trying to raise awareness for it. The dance that they're doing, uh, the, I'm not sure how, if you can tell, but they have these, the, the behind her, her elbows there, those are lit up and changing colors. This is, this, this fancy shawl, shawl dress, dress, fancy shawl dress is meant to, sh to represent turning from a cocoon into a butterfly. Um, that's, that's the kind of the path of woman, womanhood for indigenous people. So. Uh, this is this is Nadine. Nadine's really really awesome person. Um, I uh, this kind of speaks to why I've learned why fashion is important and and specifically fashion tech. When we met Nadine, when I met Nadine the first time, what I saw was somebody that was missing her legs at her knees and missing one arm at her elbow. It was um, it's very easy to see how somebody is more different than they are alike. Um, and when, when that happens, it kind of erects a bit of a barrier. And I'm not like, it, it, like I felt like I didn't understand her experience. There's no way I could understand her experience. But you know what, when she put on glowing prosthetics, well then all of a sudden it becomes an invitation, right? All of a sudden, 
you want to go up and talk to her and learn about her because now, now it's a story. And I, and I feel like, I don't know, I, I have that problem all the time of walking into a room. And if I, in, you know, and, and want to get noticed or want to talk to people, all I have to do is plug this thing in. Need your mic. And, uh, and very quickly, <laughs> very quickly people will approach me and come and talk to me. Um, you know, I, I don't know if this needs to be just a social crutch, but um, it, it works that way for me. One of the really cool things about it is that Nadine has, she just became one of our models. So afterwards, we stopped even, even bringing up that, that she was a prosthetic model, and there she is modeling one of our wedding dresses. Great story about her, she can adjust her height. So she can come in, you know, at five foot five or be five foot eight, depending on what you need. So she's, she's, she's hand, she has superpowers. So you may be wondering, uh, how did Make Fashion come to be? And uh, well, it starts with a farm boy, and I'm gonna let Shannon here tell his story. Um, yeah, so I, I grew up on a farm 40 miles away from the nearest paved road. Um, my dad, uh, he was given the directions to a surveyor stake and then drove a cat to that surveyor stake, cleared the land. And then as kids, we would pick rocks and roots and uh, I would milk the cow before going to school in the morning. I actually have ridden a horse to school um, and a snowmobile. Uh, so, yeah, so, um, so how does that lead to, uh, to, to fashion technology? I, I, I really don't know. Um, I moved, I, I, I escaped the, the rural life. I moved to the city. Um, I got my de uh, degree in computing science, um, worked for uh, some tech companies for a while, um, ended up missing this ability to, because on the farm, if something's broke, you fix it. If you don't have something, you make it. You know, it, I missed that. So I got involved in the maker community. We hosted a bunch of maker fairs. I, I've, I've ran a maker space, I've opened a couple maker spaces, um, and that has kind of, that rabbit hole has become my life. We started doing Make Fashion as a way to teach people about wearable technology. We thought that was interesting, and it really kind of grew into a life of its own. It, um, it uh, when, when we had, uh, when we did our first runway show, um, uh, one of the pieces went viral. Um, we got invited to do the Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas, and then 80 shows later, right? Um, we, we, uh, we took off some time. Am I telling this, or am I getting ahead? You're getting ahead Okay, I'm going I'm to be quiet. Yeah, it's Sydney's turn. Okay. Okay, so um, my story is a little bit different than Shannon's. Uh, I've always liked to express my femininity. Uh, when I was a kid, there was a time of my life where I would literally wear nothing but dresses, the frillier the better. Uh, even when it was minus 40, I would still just convince my parents that I could wear snow pants and go to school in my dress. Um, this developed into a love of fashion. When I was a bit older, I decided I wanted to be a fashion designer. Uh, but of course, my parents were like, no, there's no money in that. Uh, I should go into oil and gas because that's where all the money seems to go in Alberta. Uh, so, when I started university, I went into chemical engineering. Uh, I soon discovered, though, a love for computer science, which wasn't something that I thought that I would be capable of. Uh, but as it turns out, I'm pretty damn good at it. And, uh, yeah, I switched my major and haven't looked back. Um, when I, uh, during my undergrad, I also got to work as a junior software developer at a company. Uh, but I felt very uninspired by this work, uh, kind of similar to Shannon. They were just kind of doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, but so when the opportunity came up to join a research lab, I decided to take it despite the uh, big pay cut that uh, I took and I still have. <laughs> but doing research made me a lot happier. So I went on to do my master's. And during that time, I attended my first Make Fashion show and uh, was just blown away by what I saw on the runway. I was inspired by how people were expressing their femininity through technology, which gets a bad rap typically of being a kind of a masculine thing, right? So I was just really inspired and I wanted to do this myself. And I got in there, did my first runway show in 2016 and they haven't gotten rid of me since. Um, so 
that's how a comp sci geek has come to give you all fashion advice. And uh, why, like, why farming and make fashion? I've discovered that since we're really the only international Oops. fashion tech runway show, um, all of the founders of Fashion Technology Runway Show are farmers. So that's a. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. But you <laughs> that's guys how it works. Yeah. <laughs> My n equals one sample set is, yeah, <laughs> leads me to believe. All right. So if there's a moral to this story at all, it's that unique experience. Whoops. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just not doing this well today. So if there's a moral at all to this story, it's that unique experiences lead to unique innovations. So no matter who you are or where you come from, you bring a unique experience to everything that you do. Uh, and that can lead to some amazing unexpected places if you let it. Uh, so lean into what makes you different, because in a world of over 7 billion people, uh, that's your superpower. So our goal during this talk was to give an overview of what we've learned from our experience with Make Fashion over the years uh, to help you not repeat our mistakes. And there's been numerous. <laughs> yeah, we've made all of the mistakes. Yeah. So uh, lesson number one. <laughs> um, okay, this wasn't us. The lesson number one <laughs> is tech can be hostile to human bodies. Okay? <laughs> so we haven't set anybody to fire, at least not that anybody can prove. Um, but there have been some uncomfortable near misses. Uh, we had, I've soldered on several live models. Um, that's not a good experience for anybody. When, when you see, when a model seems to see smoke coming from her hip, they have questions, understandably. Um, I once swapped a battery. This is like minutes before the runway show walked. I swapped a battery out and I, I have a habit of squeezing the microcontroller when I do that because if you wire it backwards, those things will get very, very hot very quickly. Burned my thumb almost instantly, ripped it out. Turns out that some of the manufacturers wire their, back their batteries backwards. So um, yeah, that's th those, are, those are painful lessons and can lead to really real, real problems. So um, the, um, another issue that we've had is that garments with lots of wires and tech in them can be very, very difficult to dress or wear. So this was a show I did in Xi'an. We were in a big rush, again, minutes before the runway, and one of the models comes out looking like a seal caught in a net. Like, she literally was walking like this. It was... <laughs> <laughs> so she came up to me to ask her to solve her problem. I didn't have time to. I clearly had time to snap a photo of this. Um, <laughs> I showed my translator a picture of what it was supposed to look and sent them off, and miraculously, they made it on the runway. Um, anyway... <laughs> Yeah. So these are issues that we have. Another thing, uh, clips and wires are, like, they dig into you, they'll catch on your clothing, they can give you rashes, all sorts of things. Uh, so in order to solve some of these problems that uh, Shannon just mentioned, we spent a lot of time on uh, trying to simplify things like power management by building our power injection system, and, you, and it utilizes uh, safe over-the-counter power, uh, power banks. So at least this way, if something explodes, it's not our fault. <laughs> um, so to explain this, I'm going to compare these two garments here. Uh, one was designed in 2015 and the other earlier this year. So the garment here, the samurai one, that's the one that was uh, made in 2015. And it has approximately 2,600 LEDs on it. The model is wearing a custom hand-soldered power distribution belt uh, that can power a small home for short periods of time. And this was created by someone who wasn't an electrical engineer. So we're happy to report that nobody caught on fire, but you can see where there could have been a chance. Um, so now the other garment, this one was done for a theater production. Uh, this one also has 2,600 LEDs on it. However, it's using three over-the-counter power banks. No soldering was required to make this. Uh, and because we built it with a simple uh, modular power injection system, we were injecting power into six locations on the garment. So it went very quickly. <laughs> okay. um, so the next lesson is, um, where's my lesson two? Here it is. Oh yeah, the next lesson is that, that, oh hang on, uh, that, 
uh, the human body can be hostile to tech. So um, in this case, um, the, the, you know, we sweat, we, uh, we stretch, we move, uh, and then sometimes we wipe out going like 60 kilometers an hour uh, skiing down a, a, a ski hill and blow out all the connections. This was uh, a commercial we did for Travel Alberta. Um, and, uh, and you can see kind of what, like what we're putting some of the tech through. And, and general LEDs aren't built for that. So uh, in this project here, our skills were put to the test because we were asked to build a skin-tight performance garment for an aerialist uh, who was able to bend his body in very unnatural ways. Uh, and this presented a similar problem to the ski commercial, uh, which we solved with stretchy wires, silicone-coated LEDs, and silicone-stranded wires. Uh, we also switched to a connector that, if stressed, will unplug gracefully instead of breaking your solder joints. Um, and as you can see in this video, Gerardo was able to move in his normal, unnatural ways, and the tech still held. <laughs> um, lesson three, diffusion can be tricky. Um, so as Arthur C. Clarke said, sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. That's kind of our goal here. Um, I would argue that the one on the right is a little bit more magical, and that's kind of what we're aiming for. Um, to, to make... Um, sorry, I'm always jumping in on your slide here. Go ahead, you tell us why. <laughs> why is this one? Uh, uh, no, you're like, supposed to say that. <laughs> okay, sorry, go back. To, to, to make this one look the way it was, we used dual edge emitting wires and uh, a, a thin diffusion layer. So the ones that, the LEDs that I'm wearing right now are those dual edge emitting LEDs. They don't exist anywhere else on the market that I know of. Um, but we, we built them so, it, so getting better diffusion would be a little bit easier. Okay, now my turn. <laughs> so when our runway shows got shut down in 2020, uh, we decided to try to build a system that resol resolved all these issues so that anyone could build advanced magical fashion tech or art projects. Um, so, so far, here are our kit components. Uh, our overall goal for the kit was to create like, robust, dynamic, and reliable fashion tech garments to give that power to others. So in the top where it's labeled A, you can see that's the power injector that, we, that I discussed earlier. Uh, and then B is some um, extender cable. So if you want to get a little bit more room in between your LEDs, you can use the silicone uh, extender cables. C is the stretchy cables that we used for the Cirque performance. So you can see Shannon's displaying that they, it's wires that stretch very well. Uh, D is our microcontroller that we created. This is loaded with the Baconix OS. It uses Bluetooth and uh, connects to your phone. We'll talk a little bit more about Baconix in a second. Um, E is our dual edge emitting LEDs. So those are the ones that create that nicer diffusion. Uh, and they come in lengths of 10 or 30 LEDs. So those are the 30 and those are the 10. And then we have the same ones in your classic forward facing LEDs uh, in 10 and 30 as well. And we're still experimenting to see if these are good length segments for fashion tech garments. We're still not, experimenting with yeah, everything. Everything, yeah, everything's an experiment. So. <laughs> Um, so in addition to the hardware, we've partnered with Baconix to build uh, software that controls the electronics without coding. So this leads to our no code, no solder framework for fashion tech. Yeah, so Baconix was a company that I, I, I'm not even sure how we discovered each other. Um, I think they saw some of our stuff, they came and talked to us. Uh, I saw their software was blown away with what they're doing. They just released their software a couple months ago. Um, it's free uh, to use. There is a paid version, but the free version is a really amazing. Um, the, uh, uh, but th their whole goal, they were work doing props for movies, and their whole goal was to create something that would allow, uh, that allow people to, uh, you know, props makers to be like superheroes. Uh, do you want to show them the... So this is, uh, this is a shot of, one of a friend of mine, uh, Ben Eady there. I'm sure many of you will recognize the guy on the left. That's Adam Savage from Mythbusters. Um, and on the right is one of the props. So Ben Eady was the props master for the last um, 
uh, yeah, Ghostbuster show. Um, and he did the, the props using the Enlighten uh, kit on the right for, that, for the proton pack on the right. I guess that's not the proton pack, but yeah. OK, so Peconics is super easy. It's literally just drag and drop and uh, add an animation and go. So in order to prove that, I'm going to make a light up top right now in front of you. And it's going to take me about five minutes. So if anyone wants to time that, go ahead, and I'll get started. So bear in mind, this is something that would normally take at least days. So the whole idea of what we've done here is we've created something that, uh, that you don't have to solder. Um, and, and again, no coding. It can be assembled really quickly. Uh, we did do a little bit of movie magic here. Um, we put the, so we've built, obviously built the, the top specifically for it. That's kind of the next thing we're trying to build and prototype. Uh, we have stretchy um, Velcro, which was another amazing discovery. Um, and we already put the Velcro on the backs of the LEDs. The LEDs come with adhesive on them, but we just threw Velcro on it. And so Sydney is, she's plugged in the, um, there's a battery pack, there's a kind of a slot for the battery pack on her back. Uh, she put a battery pack in there, she plugged the controller into it, and now she's just attaching the LEDs. Um, one of the things that we found is that with the LEDs, uh, PVC wires were too stiff. Uh, PVC wires, they, they, they're uncomfortable to wear, um, so we went and used silicone stranded wire. Now you cannot get LED strips with silicone stranded wire. So I was talking to the factory that was making them. They made me buy six kilometers of silicone stranded wire to get one of these done. So I, for each LED, I use seven and a half centimeters of wire. So I'm probably down to five and a half kilometers in my factory somewhere. Um, so yeah, so she's just building this back and putting this together. She's creating a kind of a serpentine pattern. You'll notice that she's using like a kind of simple chevron pattern for the for the, for the front, we've experimented with putting lights in every which way. The nice thing about the chevron pattern is you can bend and move around really easily. It also, I think, looks fairly attractive. Um, it, uh, going straight out to the side doesn't look as good and vertical doesn't look as good. So that's kind of how we've set it up. Um, so she's almost done putting in all the LEDs here. And now, do you want to turn it on first? So she's got it all set up, um, and, then, and then she's going to turn it on and then begin programming it. So this comes, like she, when we're testing this, we pre-programmed it, so you can see that it's actually running a program right now. And she'll put the top on, um, and then you get to see what it looks like with diffusion. But, but we're going to jump to another slide right now, in theory. Do you know how we present that slide on the screen, or not that... Uh, the screen. Oh, there we go. Okay. So this is the Beconics programming uh, platform. So she's going to um, create a new project here. Um, go under to the to the components and grab some LED strips. Okay. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> strips. You can probably just look I'm at your. So oh, blind. you can't look at your screen. No, right. I can't. So. Okay. Click double click here. Straight ten. Thank you. Right I'm there. Blind. Down. What's that? You no, can it's zoom just in. I can't see from yeah, she screen. can't see it on her screen. So, uh, anyway, that's fine. So double click on that a bunch of times, or just yeah. So now she's angling it in the direction that it would be on the piece. Uh, yeah, there's ten of them. This is going to take slightly longer than five minutes because. Because I can't see. <laughs> yeah. Don't ah, let it go. You got to grab the end. Okay, so she's going to copy, paste, paste. Paste, you're doing it on an angle again. I know. <laughs> I always do it on the angle. <laughs> I don't know why. Okay. Oh, no. All right, so she's created, so she has four strips per side. Um, so she's now just arranging them so that they're like they are in, on her piece. Uh, you can see as she drags it here, because she specified 10 LEDs, she can make that any length and it'll auto, it won't change the number of LEDs on there. If she specified a length, then it would, it, like, uh, she could, if she changed the length, then it would add LEDs to it. Um, so it's very easy to use kind of naturally. Now what she's doing is she's flipping them end for end. That will allow her to change the, the direction in the program to be the same as what she's wearing. The cool thing about this is now the software is spatially aware of where 
the LEDs are on her garment. You're connected to your skirt, by the way. So you can see on the upper right there that she's, uh, yeah, so click on that one. Hopefully that's not mine. Okay, we'll see. Um, so now she's drug a program on there um, and go ahead and load it. Okay, there you go. Aha, Yahtzee. Me. So that was... It was a little longer. But <laughs> it was a little longer, but if I wasn't so blind and had newer glasses, it would have been better. <laughs> that was your five-minute fashion tech thing. Now let's play around with this a little bit. Can you double-click on the uh, program on the timeline, the bottom left? If I can find my mouse. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, double click on it. So go down here, see where it says direction? Change the direction to uh, Y. Okay, and then load the program again, and then show everybody. So now you see it's going up and down the garment. So that was like three hours of programming that happened right there. Um, if, if you wanna, actually, why don't you stand there and then I'll do this, I'll try and do this. Actually, this isn't gonna work for me either because I don't know how to use a Mac. Um, <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go change the colors here. So if I go here, uh, let's, we want some green here. And then I'll upload. There we go, we got green. Any suggestions, we're spitballing here. Um, let's go into the library and grab um, another program. I'm just gonna drag this one on. Whoop. Add trigger, no, I don't wanna do that. There we go, yeah, I did it. Um, if I want to, I can set my fade in and fade out points here. Uh, you can see on the screen here, it'll preview for you, which is pretty cool. You notice it's going along the x-axis there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to load it again. And I think you're going to have to repower. So one of the issues that we have, unplug and plug in. One of the issues that we have with, with our tech or with the power banks that we buy from Walmart that don't blow up on us is if you're not running enough power to them, they turn off. So that's what happened there. So she's restarted it. I'm going to select, going to reconnect to it. All right, I'm not, uh, it's, it's fighting me here, Sydney. Okay, there it goes. And I'll reload the new program on. Um, so, it's, sorry. Yeah, so it's going through the first one and then you'll see it switch to the next one. So. Uh, if you want to add sensors to this, um, the Grove, it has two Grove ports on it. You can throw on, like, do you have the sensor on yours? No. No? Um, I do on mine, actually. I can, uh, do you want to connect to me, if you can? <laughs> How are we doing for time? Two connect. minutes? <laughs> Let's see if we can add sound reactivity to this. So connect to me. No. i got to stand near you because my antenna is off. Yeah, be closer, I think. Yeah. Can you load my uh, program? The men's t-shirt sound? Click on the top. Yeah. I still can't connect you though. I will cheat then. Show them how this works and then I will load it. Okay. So I broke my antenna, so it's, it's my fault here. Yeah. So uh, how this works is you just drag uh, a sensor on just like you would your LEDs, except now you can uh, double click on the sensor and you can tell it what tracks you want to trigger. And then you can go in and you can actually preview the sound. Uh, he's not connected though, so there's no preview right now. But you can set the certain wavelength to react th uh, the way you want it to. So I have just loaded the program that she's showing here. So you'll notice that we have a white sparkle at the top. And then the, uh, the low notes are going to make blue. The medium notes are going to make green. And the high notes are going to make red. So let me try this here. So if anyone has tried to integrate sensors into wearable technology, again, that was hours, if not days, of programming. Yeah. So, so anyway, yeah. that's just, us. We'd just like to say thank you for coming. Uh, if you're interested in our tech, please come check us out. Our email's there, website, or follow us on Instagram. And yeah, we'll, we'll be out, outside here for yeah. a bit. Um, I'll be here till tomorrow morning. I'll be wearing this, so I'm easy to find. Um, Sydney's got to head out, but, um, but yeah, we're more than happy to answer any questions. <laughs> uh.